on the phone. It's uh, my my buddy Mike. We'll just call him uh, Mike. And you know, sometimes uh, Mike, I refer to you as Indie Mike because um, you're you know you're a self um, identified as an independent. And and uh, welcome to the program. Hey, thanks, Sam. Uh, yes, uh, in, independent is an interesting word living in New York City. Yeah. Oh, so yes. Yeah, All right. We should say uh, Mike lives in New, uh, New York City, and it's uh, it's it's now, why now, before before I ask you why that's the case, I, I should also note that you've got to get to a uh, parent teachers conference. So um, uh, you're gonna you, you have a hard out, as we say in radio, uh, in about fifteen twenty minutes. So. Uh, just to, to get that out front so that uh, people don't think that uh, I'm shuttling you off or that you are, uh, you are running off. Why is it so tough to be an independent in New York? Well, it, the, the reason I mention it is because um, I live here. I grew up in Brooklyn. I'm, I'm your, your typical Jewish New Yorker in that sense. But I also have my business in Colorado where I have stores. So when I'm out there, my independent viewpoints um, come across as uh, uber liberal, and because I'm not in Denver, I'm actually in in the ski resorts. When I'm here, those same viewpoints come across as uber conservative. So it, it's I, I, I'm constantly um, arguing or defending opposite ends of the position. Now, since I spend most of my time here, um, and and almost all of my friends are very liberal. Uh, maybe it's this devil's advocate thing in me, but uh, I just hate going along with everybody else. All right. Well, fair enough. And and I someday I want to hear about how you defend uh, you, uh, what you sound like when you're defending uh, what is perceived as a liberal position out there. But let's leave that for the moment. So tonight, President Obama is expected to announce executive action on um, on. Uh, Essentially, uh, the way that um, the immigration authority in this country, um, how they go about uh, deporting people, essentially, is right. basically what it comes down to. Um, right. I know you have a problem with this. I know that you're not a fan of President Obama's. I'm not a huge fan of President Obama's either, but obviously for different reasons than you. Give me your perspective on this, Mike. Okay, so let me see if I can get this across without being uh, stereotyped into a position. All right. I don't know for sure what the president is going to be saying tonight. I did listen. I don't remember if the congressman's name was Gutierrez or whatever, um, but a Democratic congressman who talked about what uh, President Obama would be saying. So let me first say this. Everything I heard him say, if this is what the president says tonight, I am 100 percent in agreement with. You're not going to throw... 10 million people out of this country. It's ridiculous. 99.9% of the people are good people, whether they got here legally or illegally. We need them. I'm with that 100%. Here's what I have a problem with. I look at everything in priorities, just as you do, just as our friend Matthew does. Well, my priority used to be national security. Lately, it's become getting these two ridiculous parties to start to work together. The problem I have is that I look at the president as the adult in the room. So even if one of the sides is being petulant, he can't basically smack the kid. He's got to turn around and stick with it. So here we have a situation where I consider it a referendum, whatever, okay, that the American public seems to have said, we're not happy with you right now, Mr. President. We want to change. Unlike Clinton... All right. He has, in my opinion, has the perfect forum right now to, in a Reagan-esque way, go on television, tell the American public he hears them. He is going to work with the Republicans on compromise. He is going to start with immigration. He wants to hear about the securing of the border because he knows that's their particular issue. And he is going to make this work. That would put enough pressure on the Republicans all right, as Reagan used to do with the Democrats, to look like jerks if they don't work with him. This was the perfect time, in my opinion, and that's what we're only talking about now, in my opinion, for him to bring these two sides together or else force them to declare the fact that all they want to do is obstruct him. And instead, he turns around and he says, 
I'm going to go forward with what I consider to be a very well thought out policy, but you just don't missing, like the process. It's a he's missing the bigger picture. All he's right, now so intelligent. Okay, to, to, to do that accidentally. Okay, now listen. You're aware, right, that there is an immigration bill that has passed the Senate, sixty-eight yep. to thirty-two. So it yep. was a bipartisan bill. Yep. You are aware, and maybe you're not, um, that this bill calls for a 700-mile fence. It calls for yep. more people on the border. I don't think that's necessarily good policy, but that's what the Republicans want. It is sitting in the Senate. If it was to be allowed to get to the floor of the House by Speaker Boehner, it would pass today. It wouldn't pass with a majority of Republican votes. There would be a mix of Republican and Democratic votes, but it would pass by anybody who, who knows anything about whip counts and where everybody stands on this. Now, what more could there be, Mike? What more could President Obama say that would make them adopt the bill that you say that they would adopt? Two things, Sam. First of all, as I said before, all right, when you're the adult in the room, sometimes you got to work on that kid to go to sleep. Sometimes you got to do it more than once. Sometimes. Well, sometimes the kid be. just doesn't go to sleep. And you know what? That philosophy has always proven true with Israel and the Palestinians. At what point do we just say, okay, they're never going to agree. Let's just forget them. Well, unfortunately for me, this, in, in these years, certain opportunities present themselves. You have a change in government effective in January for whatever that's going to be worth. You have, I would bet you, if you walked outside and stopped 20 people in the street, adults, 19 of them couldn't tell you the first thing about that Senate bill. Okay? Well, that's, that's, that's probably, true. But that... I'm probably being generous to the one. <laughs> Well, so I think I think at least listen, seven of them wouldn't be able to name who the vice president is. But that's not the point, Mike. The Mike the point is is that what you're talking about will not happen. So the real question is because look, there's no way the 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 Congress if they haven't brought up the bill in the past year, there's no way Speaker Boehner can retain his speakership by if he was to bring up the bill in these four weeks of time that they have between the election and when they recess. There's no way the incoming Congress, which has more Republicans and a Republican Senate, is going to repass that bill. It's just not going to happen. So really the choice is, do you, as the president, do you do this today or does it never happen? And when we talk about kids... There's actually real kids involved in this. I just spoke to one. And her father, after 19 years in this country, who was a pastor, was deported after he got stopped for a traffic violation. She hasn't seen him in six or seven years, Mike. She won't be able to see him for at least three or four more years. And, Sam, I, I and there that. are literally I, I thousands of people who do this every day. Who, who, that happens to every day. There's 400,000 people a year that are being deported. So the question is, I get your, your analogy with the kids and the parents and this and that, but I'm daddy. I realize the kid's just not going to go to sleep. I'm going to shut the door on them at this point. I mean, what else is there to do? Well, in, in your world and in, in your opinion— you see it that way. In my world, I don't believe the president should do that. I don't believe there's so too you're willing much to make that trade here. You're willing to make that trade. I'm willing to make the following trade. I'm willing to say that I mean, if he can do this today, he can do this in January. He can. I mean, realistically, I don't know what he's going to do. Well, but he said he was going to do this over the summer, and that was the one that was supposed to bring— that's when he gave the speech that you were talking about. That's, that's when he However, went out in front of the American public and said, look, I'm begging the Congress now to pass this bill that's been passed by the Senate to take it up. I'm begging the House to do it 
don't, please, I don't want to take executive action, but if I haven't done it by the summer, I'm going to do it. And then he, he punted then. So you're suggesting that something's going to change if he does this in January? I'm suggesting that with the new Congress coming in, that this is the perfect time to allow both sides to have a, um, a respectable move to the center. But why would the Republicans move states. to the center when they're actually got more conservatives, more people who are against immigration reform, more people who have come out, said they're against this bill in the Senate? Why would they move to the center? For the same reason that it happened when Reagan did it, because the pressure gets to be too great. I got great. news for you. Reagan did the exact same thing that President Obama is doing right now. He, by executive order, it is 100% okay. true, Mike. Let it's, me. It's not true. We don't have enough time in the show, but just very quickly, all right, what Reagan did was Congress passed an amnesty clause. Or an in 1986, law. they passed an amnesty giving sta legal right. status up there to 3 million immigrants. Hold on. There were some loose ends. <laughs> that needed to be dealt with, that both sides of the House were fine with. No, that's okay? not true. That is not true. In 1987, they tried to amend that law so that spouses and children who did not meet the test to qualify under that um, 86 bill, efforts in Congress to amend the law to cover those family members failed. They could not pass a bill in the House to fix it, and Reagan ordered the Immigration and Naturalization Service Commissioner to announce that minor children and parents granted amnesty by the law could get protection from deportation. deportation. That's exactly what happened, Mike. Okay, let me ask you a question, Sam. Did right after that, and we could debate that issue, but did right after that, that same Congress pass a law forbidding the president to do this any longer. In 1989, the Senate voted 81 to 17 to pass that law. The House did not take up the bill. So the law was not passed. And then in 1990, George Herbert Walker uh, Bush did another executive action that uh, uh, up to, according to their estimates, 1.5 million people would be covered by the policy. So, again, the law was not passed. Correct. So when President The Obama, first one was, but not okay. the, the, the one that had to be fixed by executive action. Okay, so the first law was passed. So when President Obama last year came out and said that he doesn't have the power to do this, and, and by the way... He was wrong. That's a discussion I don't really want to get into because I happen to like what he's planning on doing. My objection is not what he's doing. My objection is the missed opportunity... But 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 you, that missed opportunity is, is pretend. It's made him. up, Mike. It doesn't exist. I mean, mean the bill's been exist? sitting there for a year. I'm talking about doing it. The bill's been I'm sitting not there for a about year. The fact that he's done? No, no. The I'm, bill has been sitting there for a year, and he said back in the the beginning of the summer, he did exactly what you asked him to do. He played the grown up in the room. He said to uh, to the house. Please pass this bill. They've, the Republicans have already passed it, it will, along with Democrats Sam. in the Senate. It provides 700 Sam. miles of fence. It does all those things. It's very draconian. I don't. You and I both w would, I think, find it to the right of where we want it to be. Even you would. And still, I, I don't want to see one single child in this country thrown out. I don't want to see anybody thrown out. My point is that once again, what you're saying is is. It's been sitting there, and I'm saying to you that the overwhelming, overwhelming majority of people have no idea of what's going on with that bill. But they he don't vote on it. He needs to go to the American public if he calls a special at 8 o'clock at night. He, he needs he to go did. to the American public he and did. pressure them. Will, you, will someone Google it, at what time he gave that immigration speech? It was a major address go. to the country. I mean, what is he supposed to do? Go knock on everybody's door? Yes. The, certainly the Republicans. Well, that's what it takes. Well, it's it's going to take. Yes. He's going to be out of the White House by the time that happens. There's a lot no, of doors in this country. He, he doesn't have to be that way, Sam. You just can't. You're taking such a fatalistic viewpoint, <laughs> which is what both sides do all the time. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. I'm not going to do it. So, therefore, I'm going to do my own thing. To me, this is an opportunity to try. If I try to say to Israel and the, and the Palestinians, 
There's no reason to continue to, personally, I probably think that's true, but there's no reason to continue to talk because look at all the failures we've had. So there's absolutely no reason, if this doesn't work, Mr. President Obama, then obviously the Israel and the Palestinians are totally ridiculous. Well, so wait a second. Let's, let's, uh, look, we don't have too much time to go into your analogy, but what if one of those sides could literally unilaterally fix the problem? I don't, it's not possible, but, but just to carry your analogy through, what if one of those sides could unilaterally fix the problem? At what point should they just do that? Well, it, 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 to keep the silly analogy going, here's one way you could fix it. You could kill everybody on the other side. Well, that well no, no, problem. no. No, one that doesn't kill. I mean, no one's, who's being harmed by this? By this? Yeah, I mean. By what he wants to do tonight? Yes. I, Sam, I don't know. Here's what I expect will happen. This let's will assume. Go let's assume that he's going to say we are. You know, we're still deporting four hundred thousand people a year. It's just that of the eleven or ten or eleven million people who are here without documentation, we are going to say there are. If you fall within this category, as defined by X, which will let's just say for the sake of argument, will include four million people, uh, right. you will not be one of those people who we will go after. We will get. We will be deporting four hundred thousand people a year. Uh, but they will come from this other category of people that exist out of those 11 million. So let's just assume, for the sake of our, our conversation here, we only got two or three minutes left, uh, that that's what he's going to uh, announce tonight. Who's hurt by that? Uh, no, Sam, you and I are on the same page with what he wants to do, okay? This, this discussion has nothing to do with that. I'm in agreement with you on what he wants to do. What gets hurt is this will then... You just think he should do this in problem. February. I'm saying this will create a bigger problem between the schism between the Republicans and the Democrats. That will now take once again an even bigger center stage of fighting, of gridlock, of nothing. All right. And therefore, while we solve one problem, which I am in favor of on the immigration side, which, by the way, is certainly more liberal than you would consider a conservative side. All right. I I'm with you 100 percent on that. But it loses a bigger, in my opinion, a bigger opportunity, not a guaranteed success, Sam, which is what right, you're saying. Right, right. You want a guaranteed success. I'm saying an opportunity. So for the difference of X number of weeks to take your case to the American public, not to the Republicans, to the American public, as Reagan did with the Democrats. <laughs> He right. did this and already, to, and Reagan did, did use the executive action. Effectively. He but, but, not but Mike, effectively. Mike, 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 the Republican Party is not swayed. We know right now the majority of Americans, when polled, it's not a huge majority, but the majority of them support the executive action. It doesn't matter. Okay. Because they're not the ones who vote for Republicans, and the Republicans don't care. They announced on day two of this administration, McConnell said, our job is to make sure he doesn't get reelected. There's okay. no rational reason to believe that the Republicans are going to move off this position whatsoever. So just thinking from the standpoint of, of a David Axelrod, a James Carville, uh, a Karl Rove, or any one of those, wouldn't it be highly beneficial for the, for the president to make this his absolute signature situation now, fireside chat the American public, get the press all behind him, put the law relief out to the Republicans. They're not even going to cover his stuff, announcement tonight. And if they don't succeed... If the Republicans basically blow them off, wouldn't that be a great thing to deal with two years from now when the Democrat is running for president? Listen, I am saying to you, it puts so an for you, you're saying, pressure. well, first off, the networks aren't even covering his announcement tonight. <laughs> OK, I know and I, 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 he can't make them. And the, the reality is he gave the speech that you're talking about. He gave it six months ago. And there's not much more the president can do. If the president had the ability to move the American public in the way that you said, then you know what? We probably wouldn't have a Republican-controlled Senate come in January. And we probably wouldn't have uh, the, the Republicans picking up 10 seats. But listen, I know you got to go, get, unless you don't. You're getting cynical, Sam. Huh? This is not the same. You're getting too cynical. <laughs> you got to keep trying. <laughs> Okay, maybe I'm being maybe I'm being just, you know, silly about this, but you got to keep trying. 
Well, there's too much you know at what? stake here um, for another two years of the horse manure. How many thousands of kids are, are you willing to be separated from their parents to keep trying question, to help that process? Unfair, that's, that's no, totally that is question. exactly the question. Okay. No, then, then for that argument, we should never close any border. We don't even need an immigration naturalization. Just let everybody come in because everyone you don't let come in, you're doing the same thing. That's not a fair argument. No, okay. that is a fair. You and I agree on the policy, together. I thought. I do, but that's because I agree with the policy, you can't then say to me, well, if you wait until Tuesday on Monday, this kid can't get in. It's well, just not a fair question. I don't want to see one little child get hurt. I don't want to see one little child lose an opportunity. I agree with you there. But I want to see this country... I mean, being older than you, I actually remember when Republicans and Democrats could argue and go to dinner. I have never seen it like this. Oh, and when I know. There's an but opportunity. You got to. Do take you think it's both? All right, we got. We just we got a minute because I know you got to go. Do you think it's both parties who are responsible for this? I think I 100 percent think it's both parties that are responsible for this. Now, you want to take an individual issue? I can't. I can't answer you on that. But if you're asking me, do I think both parties are responsible for this banging heads against the wall situation? Absolutely. I don't think the Democrats were great when George Bush was in. I don't think the Republicans have been great with Barack Obama being in. No, I think today it's all about winning. It's all about power. It's all about maintaining your place. If it was me, there'd be term limits on, on the janitor in the place. But that's not me. So, yes. I don't believe any side wears the, wears the good hat versus the bad hat. I okay. believe they're all to blame. All right. Well, uh, Indy Mike, that's why we call you uh, Indy Mike. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate the you're coming on, buddy. We got to do this again. Anytime you want, Sam. That I don't have parent teachers, I'm happy to do this. All right. Great. I'm glad. All right, Mike. I look thanks so to much. Seeing you without the radio. Yes. All right. Bye, bye, buddy. Take care, buddy. Bye. <sighs> it's. Not a, that is not a performance piece, folks. That is not a performance piece. I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but uh, fortunately, Indy Mike does not um, uh, rule the day, and uh, President Obama will.